Hey fam, Alexa Reigns here with another reaction. So today we're going to be watching Chicago, uh, which I'm super excited about. I love Mia Musical. And um, the only thing I know about Chicago is I believe there's a character named Roxy. And I only know that because I've... I've known a few actresses that played the role. But other than that, I have no idea about this movie. Um, I believe it's one of my cousin's favorite movies as well. So I can't wait to be able to watch it and then talk to her about it. Um, so yeah, that's all I know about the movie. I'm super excited and I just want to jump right into it. So as always, if you are looking for the full length reaction to this particular movie or any of my other content, you can find that on Patreon and I'm going to be putting the link in the description below. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this movie. Oh, I think I know this song. Five, six, seven, eight. Mm. Why is there a gun? Uh, why is she bleeding? I want to see Moulin Rouge too, because I haven't seen that one either. Tay Diggs! Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? And this one. And all that jazz. I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz. Hold on, hun, we're gonna bunny hug. I bought some aspirin, got that genetic drug. In case you shake up heart, I want a brand new start to do that. Jazz. Let's go, babe. But I didn't even meet your friend, that, that manager guy. Don't worry, Roxy. It's all taken care of. Told him about me. Yeah, kid. It's all arranged. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Hello, Miss Bruzewitz. Mrs. Hart. <laughs> this is Fred. <laughs> He's my brother. <laughs> oh. That. Catherine Zeta Jones is amazing. Oh, wow. I know, because that was the night Thelma Kelly plugged her husband and her sister. You know, they say that she found them in the kiff together. Gosh, if I ever found it. Amos, it's it's, it's been, been a month. Wake up, kiddo. You ain't never gonna have an act. Says who? Face it, Lexi. You're a two bit talent with skinny legs. What? Just a furniture salesman. Yeah, but you got connections, you know? The guy down at the club. There's no guy. Yeah, that night. It was the first time I set foot in that joint. I was collecting on a bet from the trombone player. Of course not. Sugar, you were hot stuff. I would have said anything to get a piece of that. Oh, what? Wait, what do you mean? Were hot stuff? We had some laughs. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> you get up! Ah! You touch me again, I'll put your lights out. What? Your husband will be home soon. Why don't you watch yourself before you go hitting those sheets again? You're a liar, Fred. Yeah, so what? You lied to me. Yes, son of a bitch. 
Okay. From the top. Well, a man's got a right to protect his home and his loved ones, right? Of course he has. Well, I come home from the garage and I see him climbing through the window. Uh-huh. With my wife, Roxy, laying there, sleeping like an angel. Is that true, Mrs. Hart? I'm telling you, it's the God's honest truth. My wife had nothing to do with it. She wouldn't hurt a worm, not even a worm. Now, it wasn't until I fired the first shot she even opened her eyes. Boy, she's some heavy sleeper. I always said she could sleep to the St. Patty's Day Parade. The name of deceased Fred Casely. Fred Casely? How could he be a burglar? My wife knows him. He sold us our furniture. He gave us 10% off. Lord knows he ain't got the smarts. He told me he was a burglar. You mean he was dead when you got home? She had him covered in a sheet, and she's telling me some cock and bull story about this burglar and how I ought to say I did it because I was sure to get off. Help me, Amos, she says. It's my goddamn hour. Now he shut off his trap. I can't stand that sap. You double crosser, you big blabbermouth. You promised you'd stick. What are you talking about? You've been stringing me, Roxanne. Shut you told me he's a burglar. God the whole time you've been up here jazzing him. You are a disloyal husband. But it was self-defense. He was trying to burgle me. From what I hear, he's been burgling you three times a week for the last month. Ooh. So what do you say, missus? That's him, all right. Thank you. Fred Casely could, with a wife and five little Casleys, or did he forget to mention them? What? All his. That bastard! That bastard! Yeah, I killed him, and I would kill him again. Once was enough, dearie. Take her downtown. Come on. Boy. Ever had Morton before? She's fine, as long as you keep her happy. Queen of Divas in this? Ask any of the chickies in my place. Oh, yes. They'll tell you I'm the biggest mother hen. When you're good to mama, mama's good. Yes. Let's go. You must be hard. Ain't you the pretty one? Thank you, man. Oh, no, call me mama. I'm here to take care of you. Now you'll be habitating down in the East Block. Murderous Row, we call it. Oh. Is that nicer? <laughs> Never heard of a man getting killed when he didn't get just what was coming to him. Hey, Mama, come here, come here. Thelma Kelly, you were the Thelma Kelly. You know I was there that night. I was there the night that you got arrested. Yeah, you and half of Chicago. Yeah. Look at this, Mama. Oh. An editorial denouncing me in Red Book magazine. Not in memory do we recall so fiendish and horrible a double homicide. Mm. Baby, you couldn't buy that kind of publicity. Couldn't buy it? I guess I can keep this then. <laughs> nice try. When you're good to mama. All right, Mama. Mama, um, it's kind of uh, freezing in here. You don't think maybe there's something wrong with the heat? Not that I'm complaining, mind you, but but you know, if um, if you got a couple extra blankets tucked away. Ooh. You haven't done anything for Mama yet. Lights out, ladies. Oh. I've heard this song. I think I heard it in uh, like Dancing with the Stars or something. And now, the six merry murderesses of the Cook County Jail in their rendition of the Cell Block Tank. Mm -hmm. You've been screwing the milkman, he says. He was crazy and he kept on screaming, you've been screwing the milkman. And he ran into my knife. 
He ran into my knife ten times. If you'd have been there, if you'd have seen it, I bet you would have The choreography of this show so far, or this movie, is insane. So this one night before the show, we're down at the Hotel Cicero. The three of us boozing, having a few laughs. And we run out of ice, so I go out to get some. I come back, open the door, and there's Veronica and Charlie doing number 17, the spread eagle. Well, I was in such a state of shock, I completely blacked out, I can't remember a thing. It wasn't until later, when I was washing the blood off my hands, I even knew they were dead. They had it coming! Damn! God, she is amazing. I loved Al Lipschitz more than I could possibly say. He was a real artistic guy, sensitive, a painter. But he was always trying to find himself. He'd go out every night looking for himself, and on the way, he found Ruth, Gladys, Rosemary. Irving. Irving. I guess oh, you damn. broke up because of artistic differences. He saw himself as alive, and I saw him dead. The dirty bum, 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 Oh, this was amazing. Jim's. Yeah. I don't know. It's gonna take another phone call. How much is that gonna cost? Oh, come on, Val. How do I feel about you. You're like family to me. You're like one of my own. Yeah. I'll do it for fifty bucks. Fifty bucks for a phone call? You must get a lot of wrong numbers, Mama. Want some advice? Here it is, direct from me. Mm -mm. Keep your paws off my underwear. Yeah, okay. That's not the advice she was looking for, but okay. Thanks. For nothing. Yeah. <laughs> she's something, ain't she? But I tell you, no matter how big she gets, she's still as common as ever. What are you gonna tell the jury? I just figure I'd tell them the truth. The truth? Huh? That's a one-way ticket to the death house. Holy mother of God. <laughs> I mean, in this town, murder's a form of entertainment. Besides, in 47 years, Cook County ain't never hung a woman yet. So the odds are 47 to 1 that they won't hang you. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. You're talking to the wrong people. <laughs> what you need is Billy Flynn. Tell you what he don't know about juries and women. How do you get this Billy Flynn? Well, not by praying, dearie. First, you give me $100. And then I make a phone call. $100? Well, you just... I mean, it seems pretty steep for a phone call. Oh, but he's worth every cent. I mean, he's never lost a case for a female client yet. Who's Billy? Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the silver-tongued prince of the courtroom, the one, the only, Billy Flynn. Is it Richard Gere? Is that his name? I don't care about expensive things. Cashmere coats, diamonds. I did not know anybody in this cast. Like, or I did not know that all these people that I actually like are in this cast. You tell him, sweetheart. I know her too. I can't remember a thing. Only that I didn't do it. Any idea who did do No, no, but my client is offering a substantial reward to anyone with information about this crime. How much is the reward, Miss Kelly? I don't know. How much? I'll uh, work it out after the trial. After no more questions, Miss Kelly and I have a lot of work to do. Okay. What's all this about a reward? Awfully dumb reporters. They'll write it up wrong and deny the whole thing later on. Thank you. One more question. I'm Roxy. Hi. Oh. 
Mom was asking you about me. Oh, yeah, right, right, the cute one. I was hoping that you might represent me. You got $5,000? <laughs> Gee, that's a lot of money. Mm. Mama didn't say anything about $5,000. Yeah. Look at um, Mr. Flynn. Mm -hmm. Not very good at this sort of thing, but um, maybe we could uh, make some sort of arrangement between us. Now I could be an awfully good sport. Good, you got that out of your system. Now listen, you mean just one thing to me. You call me when you got $5,000. All he cares about is all And money. Amos. My name is Amos. <laughs> That's right. Take a seat. On the other hand, your devotion to your wife is really very, very touching. I took your wife's case, and I'll keep it. Because I play square. Now look, Hart. I don't like to blow my own horn, but believe me, if Jesus Christ had lived in Chicago today, and if he had $5,000 and he'd come to me, things would have turned out differently. I was born on the beautiful Southern Crown Band. What? Oh, holy shit! Oh, I'm never gonna get this straight! Uh, pipe down to swear and look, from here on in, you say nothing rougher than old dear, and I'll try again. I was born on. Come on, come on, come on. So I came up with some more things to do on the witness stand. I thought I'd get all teary eyed. Then ask to borrow your handkerchief. Then I thought I'd take a peek at the jury like this. Lash him a bit of thigh, huh? What do you think? Sounds great. Ooh. Okay, hey, don't you want to hear the rest? Come on, kiddo. You're at the top of my list. Well, well, well. Sorry to be late, Mr. Flip. Uh huh. I hope you weren't too bored. Ooh. <laughs> hey, I got you now, bitch. I heard your press conference is tomorrow. Yeah, what's it to you? My client has just entered a plea of not guilty. We look forward to a trial at the earliest possible date. Now, are there any questions? Do you have any advice for young girls seeking to avoid a life of jazz and drink? Absolutely, yes. Mrs. Hart feels that it was the tragic combination of liquor and jazz which led to her downfall. Next question. Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to say how flattered I am that y'all came to see me. Yeah, Mrs. Hart is very pleased. You see, I was a moth crushed on the wheel. You know, a butterfly drawn to the to the... I bet you want to know why I shot the bastard. <laughs> Shut up, dummy. Mr. Billy Flynn in the press conference ran. Notice how his mouth never moves. Almost. <laughs> Did you fight him? Like a tiger. He had strength and she had none. And yet we both reached for the gun. And yet, so yes, 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 are you kidding? What's your statement? All I say is, don't my choo-choo jump the track. I give my life to bring him back. And Stay away from fun. jazz and liquor. And, and the men who what? play for fun. And what? That's the thought that yeah. came upon me when? when we both reached for the gun. Please don't say anything crazy. That is same hair. Fellas want to go out with her. Some little girls even want to take her home. Don't get any ideas, little lady. So, kiddo, giving any thought to what you want to do after Billy gets you off? Yeah, I think I'd like to go on the stage. Yeah, I figured as much. I already called the Morris office. Really? How much is that gonna cost me? Well, standard deal. Ten percent of all your takings. Yeah, well, we'll see, Mama. Besides, I don't even have an act yet. Well, killing Fred Casely was your act. 
I mean, that's all those stiffs in the audience want, to say they saw somebody famous. It's a freak act. In the bed department, Amos was zero. I mean, when he made love to me, it was like, it was like he was fixing a carburetor or something. I love you, honey, I love you. Anyway, I started fooling around. Then I started screwing around, which is fooling around without them. <laughs> I guess it didn't really work out too great for Fred either. So I gave up on the whole Bob Bill idea. Because you kind of figure after all those years, opportunities just passed you by. But it ain't. Oh, no, 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 no. But it ain't. And now. Well, if this one guy gets Bob, with all this publicity, I got me a world full of yes! From just some dumb mechanic's wife, I'm gonna be Roxy. Who says that murder's not an art? Roxy Hart. <laughs> She's so cute. She's a murderer, but she's so cute. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's awesome. Ooh, she's not happy. I just can't take it anymore. I can't go anywhere without hearing about that dumb tomato. Ooh! Oh. She got the same hair. Got some bad news, kid. The tour's been canceled. What? Well, your name's been out of the papers too long. All you read about today is that heart, kid. Mind if I join you? <laughs> Look what some Johnny sent me. Triple cream caramels all the way from San Francisco. Oh, <laughs> I'm watching my figure. You know, the trial. <laughs> oh. Hey, great mention of you on a trip today, huh? <laughs> no, there have been so many, I just can't keep track. <laughs> Damn, yep. My sister and I had an act that couldn't flop. My sister and I were headed straight for the top. My sister and I earned a vow a week at least. Oh, yeah. But my sister is now unfortunately deceased. <laughs> I know it's sad, of course, but a fact is still a fact. And now all that remains is the remains of a perfect double act. Now you see me going through it. You may think there's nothing to it, but I simply cannot do it. Hey, Where's the part where you blew her brains out? Ooh. Okay, Roxy, I'll, I'll level with you. Oh, no, no, no. Don't bother. You think you're fooling with me? You're all washed up, and it's me they want now, and I'm a big star. I'm not. Oh, not yet. Oh, I almost forgot. You were in the paper today, too. In the back of the obituaries. Thelma Kelly's trial has been postponed indefinitely. Seven words. 
Oh, Roxy, don't let it get to your head. Uh, she's playing house on the north side in an apartment with a guy named Harry. See what Harry does for a living, no one's quite sure, but it doesn't really matter because she's Lucy Lou. Anyhow, Kitty comes home tonight. Harry's already in bed, which is par for the course for Harry. She goes to change. When she returns, she notices something rather odd. Extremely odd. Oh. Kitty disappears for a second, cool as a cucumber, and she returns, she gently wakes up Harry. Yeah, two girls? Says, what? I'm alone. <laughs> she said, alone? Well, you said you got two other women in bed with you. <laughs> so get this. Harry's... He says, come on, Tom. You gotta believe what you see or what I tell you. <laughs> Good night, folks. Are you sorry, dear? Sure, I'm sorry. Sorry, I got caught. Oh, oh hey, Miss Sunshine. Not now, Rox. I got a letter from a guy. He says that he's going on a hunger strike until I'm free. That's nice. Miss Carter. You've been forgotten. Did I know these two ladies personally? Was that your question? Yeah, that's my question. Oh. Oh. She's very high spirited, isn't she? Miss Baxter. Oh, hey, Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Yeah, hi, Trixie. It's Roxy. Yeah, sure, it's just kidding. Hey, do you get my trial date yet? Listen, kid. Yeah, I'm at the top of your list, right? <laughs> what a hell of it, huh? Socialite, too. Her mother owns all the pineapples in Hawaii. Wait, what the hell do I care about pineapples? Oh, all right, Listen, all right. I, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, you've been forgotten now. I'll be happy to give the interview myself. Really? How's it feel, kid? Jed uh, Hoover couldn't find your name in the papers. That's what it is. It's a cycle. Oh. Mr. Flynn? Yeah. Ooh, that's smart. I only hope the fall didn't hurt the baby. Baby. Ooh. That's smart. That's smart. She's good. She's really good. Yeah, she's not pregnant, boo. Oh. Everyone is gonna dress as a joker or as a clown. That person it should be invisible, inconsequential. Me. Cellophane, Mr. Cellophane. I heard this song in glee. Mr. Cellophane, cause you can look right through me, walk right by me, and never know I'm there. Look, Andy, I'm afraid I gotta hit you hard. I can only hope that you'll be big about it. Amos. My name Did he call him Andy? Who said it wasn't? 
<laughs> oh, it was the kid. The kid's name I was thinking about. Yeah. You know when she's due? September. Oh, but we pass out those cigars anyway. And I don't want you to give a damn when people... People what? <sighs> laugh. Laugh? Why would they laugh? Because they can count. <laughs> can you count? September. Oh, it would be Frank's baby. Yeah, I guess we hadn't done no copulating since... Wait a minute. That don't figure out right. I... I couldn't be the father. Well, forget about that now. My client needs your support. You mean she needs a meal ticket. That's all I ever been, but this time she's gone too far. What are you gonna do? Divorce her? You're damn right! I'll divorce her! Hey, Mr. Cellophane, cause you can look right through me. Walk right Aww. I know you're there. Oh, that is so sad. I didn't take up too much of your time. Poor guy. I've been waiting here for 10 minutes. Don't do that again. This dress makes me look like a Woolworths lampshade. I'm not wearing this. You're wearing it because I tell you to wear it. I'm not wearing this dress. And when Andy's on the stand, I want you to be knitting. Knitting? Oh, for Christ's sake. A sakes. baby garment. I don't know how to knit. Then learn. That is no way to win a jury's sympathy. Oh, you don't need advice anymore. Look at here, Mr. Mouthpiece. It seems Ooh. to me that I am the one who's coming up with the good ideas. I'm sick of everybody telling me what to do, and you treat me like dirt. You know that? You treat me like I'm some dumb, common criminal. But you are some dumb, common criminal. Well, it's better than being a greasy Mick lawyer. Who happens to be saving your ass? Who's out for all he can steal? Maybe you'd like to appear in court without me. Well, maybe I could. Have you read the morning papers? They love me. Why stop? They love you a lot more if you're a hang. You know why? Because there's so more papers. You're fired. Quit. Any lawyer in this town would die to have my case. You are a phony celebrity. You're flash in the pan. In a couple of weeks, no one's going to give a shit about you. And it's already happened once. That's Chicago. Girl. What happened? It's the honey egg. She lost her last appeal. So what's that mean? She's going to hang. Well, that means that next week she's going to. You talk too quick, girl. This is Mary Sunshine coming to you from the Cook County Jail where history will be made today. Catalin Holinsky will become the first woman in the state of Illinois to be executed. Believe me, you got I'm scared. It's, it's all a circus. A three ring circus. It's all, these trials, the whole world. It's, it's all show business. Hello, Amos. Amos. That's right, Mr. Flynn. Amos. Amos. When did you file suit for divorce? A month ago. Was there any reason for filing at this particular time? Well, I'll say. The newspaper said Roxy was expecting a little stranger. Well, that's hardly grounds for divorce, is it? A little too much of a stranger. Oh, I 
thought you mean you doubted the paternity of the child. Well, sure. Tell me something, Amos. You share a bed with your wife? Yes, sir, every night. All right, you expect this jury to believe that you slept next to this woman every night without exercising your rights as a husband? Well, I could have if I wanted to. Oh, but you didn't. No, I did. Did what? Want to. But you didn't. Didn't what? What you wanted. Wait a minute. I'm confused here. <laughs> Tell me, Hart, you tell me, did you ever question Roxy herself? Did you even bother to ask her if you were the father of a child? No, sir. No, no. What? If you became convinced that you were wrong, you'd be mad enough to admit it, wouldn't you? You'd even be willing to take her back if Roxy swore that you were the father of a child, which she does. She does? She does! She does! No more questions! You can step down now. Oh, what? Roxy, I'm so sorry. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They just made a whole show. They legit just wrestled that with them. <laughs> I have here a statement in which you admit to having <gasps> illicit relations with the deceased Fred Casely. Is this statement true or false? I'm afraid that's true. You're an honest girl, Roxy. When did you first meet Fred Casely? When he sold Amos and me our furniture. In your personal relationship with him? You tell the jury when that began? When I permitted him to escort me home one night. I don't think I would have gone with him if Mr. Hart and me hadn't quarreled that very morning. Quarreled? Yes, sir. Well, I suppose it was his fault. Oh, no, sir. It was my fault. I suppose I just couldn't stop pestering him. <laughs> pestering him? About what? I didn't like him working those long hours at the garage. I wanted him home with me to darn his socks and iron his shirts. I wanted a real home and a child. I was, I was, I was most unhappy. Roxy Hart! The state has accused you of the murder of Fred Casely. Are you guilty or not guilty? I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty. I killed him. I did, but I'm not a criminal. I'm not a criminal. Yeah. I'm not a criminal. Yeah. Roxy. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you recall the night of January 14th? Uh, Even I'm starting to feel bad for her. In your own words, the happenings of that night. Well, when Fred came over, I told him my good news. And what was that? that me and Amos were going to have a baby. Mm. And then it was all over between us. What happened then? Well, then, uh... Oh. Then... Did he threaten you, Roxy? Objection, Your Honor. Counsel's leading the witness. Sustained. <laughs> what did Casely say when you told him the news? I'll... Kill you before I see you have another man's child. Could you tell the audience, the jury? What the audience. You? Well, in his passion, he he tore off my robe and he threw me on the bed. And 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 Mr. Hart's pistol was lying there between us. And then. And then we both reached for the gun, but I got it first. And then he came toward me with this this funny look in his eyes. He was angry and wild. 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 And did you think he meant to kill you? Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it was his life or yours? And not just mine. I closed my eyes and I shot. In defense of your life. To save my husband's innocent unborn child. Wow. Even now. Oh. What a bullseye, huh? Even I'm like... Mrs. Hart's behavior throughout this ordeal has been truly extraordinary. Yeah, I bet it has. Opening her eyes, she fans herself with her attorney's handkerchief. Handkerchief? Poor child has had no relief. She looks around now, bewildered, seeming to want something. Oh, it's a glass of water. Oh, Mama, that was my she bit. I told Billy I was going to do that at my trial. But now her eyes flutter wildly, and she... Mrs. Hart has fainted again. State calls a rebuttal witness. Oh, shit. 
the Bible, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, hold the truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. And then some. Have a seat. What a laugh. Plug in Fred Casely. The big baboon had it coming. I'm just sorry I only got to kill him once. I never wrote that. You. Hey, she made that Order. up. Order. She made that Order. up. She made that Order. up. Order. Please, Mr. Flynn, get control of your client. I'm sorry, Your Honor, won't happen again. Sit down. <laughs> Shit. It's only make it worse. Fred Casely assured me he'd get me an audition down at the Onyx. And then he reneged on his pledge, and that was my motive for attacking him. Pretty fancy way of saying you're the big fat liar who welched on a deal, so I shot him. <laughs> Amos accused me of having an affair, so I told him that the charge was erroneous. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Flynn is twisting this evidence to draw conclusions that are specious and uh... erroneous. Exactly. <laughs> It doesn't sound like her now, does it? Miss Kelly, do you know the meaning of the word perjury? Yes, I do. You also know that it's a crime? Yes. I mean, for example, if it turns out that you knew that this diary was a fake, I'd hate to think of you rotting away in prison for the next 10 years, especially since you just won your freedom. Look, all I know is what I was told. By whom? So, all right, so you, you didn't find this diary in Roxy's cell? No. Mama, Miss Morton, gave it to me. She said someone had sent it to her. Call me crazy. Doesn't that sound like a lawyer to you? A lawyer. A lawyer who obviously had a sample of my client's handwriting. Mr. Harrison, didn't you ask Roxy to write out a confession for you? Yes, but you're not suggesting that I tamper with evidence, are you? No, 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 no. I, no I would, let's, don't be ridiculous. No, that's thoroughly and utterly absurd. But now that you mention it. Your Honor, this is outrageous. It's outrageous. I know. Outrageous. You can suggest that the prosecutor would make a thieves' bargain with a notorious Velma Kelly and then fabricate the very evidence and set her free. Come clean, Mr. Harris, and come clean, even in Chicago. This kind of corruption cannot stand, will not stand. That's enough, Mr. Flynn. I agree, Your Honor. It is enough. The defense rests. Wow. Wow. Gentlemen, this is Mary Sunshine. Reporting. I wouldn't be surprised if she gets off. The city of Chicago has come to a We all need to know. As the trial of the city draws to a close. Look, I have too much tension in my neck. Sits quietly at the defense table, hands folded, wondering what fate has in store for her. We the jury find the defendant. Oh gosh. Oh, they're waiting. <laughs> Like, we don't know which paper it is it's going to be. Innocent! Yes! What the fuck? It's another one. And just like that. Not anymore. Hey, what happened? Your gratitude is yeah. overwhelming, kid. I just saved your life. Yeah, and you got five thousand dollars. Your life. I get nothing. Five? Actually, it's ten once I collect from Velma. I get nothing. Mm. Oh, don't forget your. Plus you get your life. life. Hope you don't mind. I added a few erroneous phrases in there. Sorry, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't take a chance. So he ends up getting two girls out for the price of one. Well, price of two, really. You're a free woman, Roxy Hart. And God save Illinois. Roxy. Oh. He wants you. He loves you. I want you to come home. He said you still wanted to. And the baby? Baby? What baby? There ain't no baby? They didn't even want my picture. I just... I can't understand that. Picture. Isn't it grand? Isn't it great? Isn't it so well? That's great. Isn't... 
in touch. You know, I'm not quite finished yet. I have a, I, I have, wait, 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 wait. Um, I could, uh, just a second, I'm not, God damn it. Thank you. Who's the music, hon? You know, you're really pretty good. Yeah, that and a dime. What are you doing here? I heard you've been, uh, making the rounds. Yeah, well, if it was up to you, I'd be swinging by now. Come on, I always knew Billy'd get you off. Oh. You should learn how to put things behind you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll put that at the top of my list right after finding a job and an apartment with a John. Just shut up and listen oh. to me. Think about it, Roxy. Her face is back in the papers, her name's on the marquee. Velma Kelly and Roxy Hart. Shouldn't it be alphabetical? That could work. Come on, Andre. Maybe we could ask for thou. We're worth it. Oh, forget Why? <laughs> no. Why? Why not? Because I hate you. There's only one business in the world where that's not show business, girl. Come on, Roxy and Velma. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicago Theater is proud to announce the first. The first time anywhere there's been an act of this nature. Not only one little lady, but two. You've read about them in the papers, and now here they are. Chicago's own killer dillers. Those scintillating sinners. Roxy Hart and Bob. Yes! Oh my god, they're amazing together. Woo! That looks like so much fun. That is so cool. That was amazing. Oh, amazing. Another great, great, great uh, movie. Uh, love, I love a good musical, and this was definitely one of them. Um, uh, great songs, great acting. Love the cast. Um, I can't wait to rewatch it again. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends and you with your loved ones. Love this. I just cannot say anything more than I just loved it. It was great. Oh, I just can't wait to watch my next musical. And if you guys liked it, again, like, comment, subscribe. Um, put in your comment what the next musical you guys would like me to listen to or watch. Um, I can't wait to talk to you guys about it on the comments. It was amazing. And uh, yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah. Bye.